Welcome back to the Chippewa Spotlight Gardner Bender GDT 3200. And the GB just might stand for Groovy Baby. I've got something incredibly funky. How groovy is this multimeter? Let's find out. Gardner Bender's been around for a long, long time. Uh, well, well over 60 years. Founded way back in 1959 by James Gardner, who, believe it or not, borrowed 1500 bucks from his father-in-law to start the business. Can you imagine? Wow. Now, now the enclosure uh, surround is definitely detachable, and that's a good thing. But the problem with this one is it has that permanent uh, tilt stand. It's part of the boot, and I don't like it because, well, that's one of the reasons, because it's just... Ah, oh, really easy to come apart. Also got those funky little holders for your test leads. Uh, they do a pretty decent job actually. And it's kind of nice because you can rest your meter uh, without anything funky going on. And if you want to do a one-hander, hey, no problemo. Yeah, you can probe and test at the same time. Hey, while we're talking about it, let's get rid of this nasty little screen protector. Ah, oh, much nicer. One thing that really sucks is the fact that if you got to change your batteries, yeah, you got to remove the boot. You just can't access anything without removing that boot. So it becomes a bit of a process. Uh, the more you take it off, the more, uh, the easier it is, you know, less resistance over time, but still, it's a little problematic. Yeah, and uh, two Phillips screws, that's where the batteries are. And there's that battery well, two AAA batteries stuck in just like so so yeah should have had easier access Take a look at the selector switch starting at the nine o'clock or off position volts dc up to 600 volts ac volts up to 500 volts resistance up to 20 mega ohm continuity and diode 1.5 volt battery test temperature in both celsius and fahrenheit finally at the three o'clock a secondary off position Top of the meter, not much going on. Single backlight button and a select button. Finally, at the bottom of the meter, we have two inputs only. On the left, we have our positive volts and resistance. And on the right-hand side, we have our common or negative. Size-wise, it's on the small side. Uh, almost half the size of that uh, Kaiweets H2118E. Um, and a lot smaller than the MM600 from Klein. Pretty well... Uh, you know close to a standard little 830 clone um but it is a thick meter for a small meter it is definitely on the thick side compared to your standard multimeter look of days gone by uh, and even modern day it's a little weird looking i don't know is it just me or is it just funky it's a little funky i like funky accuracy wise uh you know it's not the best 0.5 percent plus or minus five digits. So yeah, if you're gonna split the atom, you're probably gonna use this Gardner Band. Input impedance is a balmy 11 mega ohm. Let's take a further look at voltage hooked up to the uh, Hewlett Packard 3610A power supply right now. DC power supply, 15.00 volts, 14.97 for the BK Precision, and 15.1 for the Gardner Bender. Interesting. Let's bring it down a little bit. 12.98 volts, 13.05, a little on the high side for the Gardner, 12.94 for the BK Precision. Settle now 10.33 volts, 10.30, and 10.39. So the Gardner seems to be a little bit on the high side, still definitely within range. 8.24, 8.22, 8.28. Let's bring it right down. One volt even, Steven. One volt even for the BK Precision. 1.004, 1.009 for the Gardner Bender. So all in all, not too shabby, perhaps to a little bit on the hey, Let's face it, you don't need that kind of precision if you're gonna be using the Gardner Bender. And we're looking at AC volts right now. Remember, this is not true RMS. 119.920, well, guess what? Doesn't make a difference in this case. Excellente. Resistance on those test leads is nada, 
not a pinata, negligible, nothing. So, uh, good job, Gardner Bender. 100 ohm resistor right now. Oh, so close. 99.9. A lot of meters have trouble with these 0.5 ohm resistors. Let's try this one. Oh, yeah. And 22 mega ohm, which will bring us over our threshold. Nice thing about not being able to do current is the fact you only have two inputs, so you never have to bother changing the test leads. I oh, love it. Something else I'm not a big fan of is the fact that they changed the standard uh, for those inputs. So instead of having the positive on the right and the common or ground on the left, they reversed it. So positive on the left, common on the right, uh, it's not the way it's usually done. Hit select twice to get into diode mode. There we go. Starting off with a red LED. Nothing. Green. Nope. Yellow. Oh, that's too bad. The white. Oh, man. Nothing. Zero, four, five. Oh, wow. That's depressing. Standard diode. Yeah, no worries there. Output voltage in diode mode, a dismal 1.7 volts. Uh, in temperature mode, you must use your sensor. No ambient sensor is on board, so ah, too bad. Um, let's just stick it in there, shall we? And bada boom, bada bing. Good God, it's definitely not 80 degrees in here. So it's really slow. So 75 degrees Fahrenheit, hit that select switch, and that tells us it is 24 degrees Celsius. Uh, actually, a little bit on the high side. So definitely uh, on the high side. Um, yeah, it's about 18, maybe 18, 17 and a half degrees in here. Uh, definitely not 22 degrees Celsius. No, no, no. It does have a backlight. Unfortunately, it only lasts for about 15 seconds, then it turns off. <sighs> Already continuity default stock test leads. Here we go. Three, two, one. Well, it's low, latched, but well, missing every second one. It's not bad. Just a little low. Pro masters. Ah, still missing every second beat or so, and still really low. Forty-seven point six decibels. Whoa, we lost it, but that is definitely low. Probably one of the lowest I've ever heard. Ugh. This week's shout out goes to the Philippines. Kamusta. Thanks for watching. Quick look for the teardown. Um, no shielding on either side of the meter housing. Well, that's certainly no surprise. Take a look at that PCB. First thing off the bat, this is one really thin PCB. Biggest component is that pathetic performing speaker piezo yeah that was just horrible so low could barely hear it but uh, that takes up almost half of the board the jacks themselves not bad really they are not the split variety you normally see um but they do seem to be fairly well machined and housed so well something positive to say main ic is a 64 pin qfp quad flat package crystal oscillator over here at the top but really not much else going on for input protection all we have is that one lonely ptc that's it that's other it. side now and whoa look at that they actually put some dielectric on there it's greased oh so surprising considering what else you're getting with this but uh yeah at least they greased the darn selector tracks so uh, speaking of tracks here are the pads themselves. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. No pads. balls on the selector switch. Now it has that plastic housing. Those teeth just make contact with the sides. Uh, there you go. Main display over here attached just with those couple of uh, wires. Now it does come with four trim pots here. One, two, three, four. Vera, one, two, three, four. Um, so if you're uh, into that sort of self calibration fun, well, you might have a little fun with this. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's bare bones, bare bones. For 60 bucks, probably would have expected to see a little bit more. All right, gonna put it back together. Come back with my closing thoughts.
Final thoughts on the GB Gardner Bender. GDT 3200. Oh, pass this by. I just don't know where to start in terms of overall lack of performance. Man, this thing really sucked the big one. Might look funky, but that's where the fun ends. No, this thing is one poorly designed multimeter. Don't even get me started on that LED mode. Wow, absolutely horrible. And continuity, that was the lowest continuity I've ever heard. And geez Louise, what is it with this crazy price? Oh man, this thing is so overpriced, it's not even funny. Now you can't buy it on AliExpress, you can't get it anywhere except brick and mortar stores. Hmm, there's gotta be a reason why. At the end of the day, do yourself a favor and just negate this one out of your multimeter equation. The GBT 3200 from Gardner Bender gets a disappointing one out of five stars. Rest in peace, my little funky friend. I won't be seeing you anytime soon. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing. <laughs>